Hello, my name is Penilla Walsh. I'm a lecturer in the School of History at University College Dublin. I'm delighted that my book has been shortlisted for the Royal Historical Society Whitfield Prize. The book is titled Irish Women and the Great War and was published by Cambridge University Press in summer 2020. My book is the first comprehensive study of Irish women's war experience. It offers a new lens for exploring the history of the First World War and the Irish Revolution, moving away from traditional political or military histories to focus on the lived experience of those who were attempting to cope with their lives during a period of national and international turmoil. It challenges existing narratives about the extent of the war's impact on Ireland, and it provides a new conceptual framework for understanding women's lives during this decade of change. The work continues, sorry, the work contributes to the thriving international scholarship on gender and the war. Historians have debated the extent of the war's lasting impact on women, questioning whether the war constitutes progress in the struggle for women's liberation. The focus on emancipation, however, can risk distorting our understanding of how women actually experienced the war, but viewing gender relations solely through the prism of lasting social change. Returning the focus to lived experience can help us see the gritty realities of war and gain a stronger understanding of what it actually meant for women in Ireland and how this might compare to other combatant countries. I focused on the nation state through a transnational framework, bringing in local, regional, national and international perspectives and placing an experience of Irish women in their wider British and global context. Ireland offers a valuable case study for investigating women's experiences during the Great War. As part of the United Kingdom, it was a full participant, albeit with significant differences from Great Britain. In a society which had been teetering on the edge of civil war in summer 1914, the impact of the European conflict in Ireland was heavily affected by the political divisions at home. Most importantly, conscription was not implemented due to the tense political situation. The need for remobilization in the second half of the war takes place not only in the context of the war wariness prevalent across Europe, but also in the aftermath of armed insurrection in Ireland's capital city. Ireland's home front and battlefront were interconnected in different ways from the rest of the United Kingdom. The book also highlights how societies became pulled into the vortex of war despite domestic political crises and even without conscription, particularly high recruitment rates or the experience of bombardment. This examination of women's lives is pieced together using a diverse range of primary sources drawn from over 20 archives and libraries in Ireland and the United Kingdom. I've attempted to piece together the stories of many Irish women whose lives were affected by the war. These include Isabella Clark, who left her home in Belfast, aged just 16, to work in munitions factories in England, to Marie Martin, who served in voluntary nursing roles with the Red Cross in France and, and in Malta. Sophie Pierce, who abandoned her studies in the Royal College of Science to serve as a driver and messenger in France, and Letitia Overend, who played an important leadership role with the War Saint Time, Wartime St. John Ambulance Association and the Irish War Hospital Supply Depot. I've also attempted to find the voices of those who remained at home, the mothers, wives and sisters of soldiers. Women like Emily Shirley, who busied herself with charitable work while waiting for her son to return home, but who herself passed away in 1918. Senator MacDonald, who kept the family farm going in her, hus in her husband's absence, and Ruth Tallam about the new puppy, and how proud he would be of their children. Only for the latter to be returned to her husband's possessions when he died a few months before the war ended. Mary Martin, who kept a diary for six months in 1916, said that her son Charlie, reported missing in Gallipoli, might be brought up to date on all that he had missed. Drawn on these sources, the book chapters explore the core areas in which the war affected women in Ireland. Mobilisation for the war effort, domestic and family life, social morality, employment opportunities and politicisation. The book is structured thematically, with chapters outlining the various different strands of the impact of the war on women's lives, with the exception of the final chapter, which examines women's experience of demobilisation in the 12 months following the 1918 armistice. The Irish state has had a conflicted relationship to, our, to its First World War history, but Irish participation has been increasingly recognised, and it is now apparent that the war had a profound and transformative impact on women's lives on the home front. The gendered nature of war commemoration and memorialization from the outset has obscured this history and emphasized a combatant narrative. Women's voices and experiences have been marginalized, but this book brings them into focus and offers a new perspective on the history of Ireland in the 20th century. Thank you very much.